So today we're going to start chapter nine, which is still in that same booklet that we have, which is on page 13 now. Chapter nine is all about systems of inequalities. This is very similar, at least to start, as system of equations, um, but there will be some very much different flares kind of uh, added into this. So we'll see where we go with this. Let's get going. Uh, so today's plan, we're going to start by recapping the concept of inequalities. You would have dealt with this in previous years. Um, I just wanted to remind you how we deal with inequalities and how they're different than equations. Uh, then we'll introduce systems of inequalities, uh, and then we'll do some practice, including uh, introducing, of course, our homework assignment. And I'll tell you more about that as this lesson goes on. Here we go, chapter nine. And again, this is on page 13 in your notebooklet, solving systems of inequalities. Recall from previous years that an inequality works very much like an equation, just with an inequality sign. Uh, so there's four general inequality signs that we have to understand. Uh, they always basically reminded me of like a mouth trying to eat the bigger number. So if you have something and then this symbol and something, that means this symbol means greater than. If the symbol's facing the other way, it means less than. When there's a line underneath it, that means it's either greater than or equal to, or it means it's less than or equal to. It's basically all that means. And you will need to know the difference between those. Very, very important. Uh, the only other important thing to remember is that if you ever have to multiply or divide both sides of an equation, which should say inequality, my mistake, guys, say both sides of an inequality uh, by a negative number, the direction of the sign changes. Uh, so in other words, if you had like, I don't know, negative 2x is greater than 4, to get x all by itself, you'd have to divide by negative 2 on both sides. And if you're going to do that, that's going to make it x is now less than four divided by negative two, which is negative two. So again, if you ever have to multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the sign changes. It doesn't turn into a less than or equal to, it just flips around, that's all. If this was a greater than or equal to, it would change to a less than or equal to, okay? So it just, it just flips the sign around, that's all I'm saying. Here. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we'll do an example with one variable. One variable is a one dimensional problem. That'll make more sense in just a second. Uh, the question is solve and graph on a number line this statement right here, 2x plus six is greater than five x minus nine. Just like solving an equation, we wanna gather all of our x's to one side. Uh, you really could do this a bunch of different ways. Just for fun, I'm gonna move the five x over though. So I'll go minus five x minus five x. Uh, that'll give me negative 3x plus 6 is greater than negative 9, because that minus sign just gets attached to the, to the 9 there, so it becomes negative 9. Uh, now we'll move the 6 over, so we'll minus 6 from both sides. This gives me negative 3x is greater than negative 9 minus 6 is negative 15. Uh, and then I have to divide both sides by negative 3. And what do you know when you divide by a negative on an inequality? You have to flip the sign around. So it's going to be x is now less than negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5. So x is less than positive 5. That's the solve aspect. Okay, so we've got x all by itself. We now know the, the values that x can be. x is just any number that's less than 5. That's going to make this, uh, this original statement true. But it says graph on a number line. Uh, when I mentioned earlier that this is a one-dimensional problem because there is only one variable, it's just x, there's no y's in here. Uh, when I mentioned it's a one-dimensional uh, one problem, that means we can graph this one dimensionally. So in other words, on a flat, straight line. Now, when we make a number line, I always base it around uh, whatever your number was in your solution. So since it's x is less than five, I'm gonna base it around five in the very center. And then how number lines work, of course, the left goes smaller, the right goes bigger. So in other words, we'll make this four, uh, three, two, one, and blah, 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 and then go bigger, so six, uh, seven, eight, nine, good enough, right? Uh, now, since this is X is less than five, that means we have to shade everything on this number line that is less than five. However, notice it is explicitly X is less than five, not X is less than or equal to, it has to definitely be less than five. So five is not gonna be included in what we shade. So how we deal with it is we use an open circle at the five, and then we shade everything to the left of it. If you have a different color pen or pencil, that makes this look a lot better. I could have changed pen colors here, but you know what, whatever. I'll just really show you how you shade a line with one color. That's all there is to it, right? So solving it is getting this algebraic expression. 
uh, but graphing it on a number line is a nice visual because it shows you kind of exactly where those numbers are. X is just any number less than five. That would make this true. It could be negative 500, for instance. That would still make this uh, original statement up here totally true. All right, so one variable is one thing. You know, you can graph it one dimensionally. Well, what if we had two variables? Well, we'll have to graph it two-dimensionally, right? And a two-dimensional graph is just a Cartesian plane. No big deal, right? So what if we had two variables instead of just one? How can we graph this? You can graph this the same way that you'd graph a normal two-variable equation, right? If this was y equals 2x minus 4, you would just graph that line 2x minus 4. However, this is y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 4. So there's going to be a bit of an extra step here. Uh, so again, what I would say is just start by graphing this as if it were an equation. Um, so if we just ignored the whole fact that this is a greater than or equal to sign, let's graph 2x minus 4. That's a linear equation where our slope is 2 and our y-intercept is negative 4. So I start by putting a dot at negative 4 uh, and my slope is 2. That means every time I go over 1, we're going to rise 2. So over 1, rise 2, over 1, rise 2, and keep on doing that until you get a comfortable line to graph, you can even go backwards, left one down two, left one down two, left one down two. Now we could equal this line because it's greater than or equals to. So we're going to actually graph this line directly because we could be anywhere along this line. So be careful as you do this. Again, on a piece of paper, it's a lot easier if you have a ruler. Using my pen tablet, this is kind of a pain. I'm not doing a bad job though. There we go. So cool. All right. So that's that that would be it if it was just uh, you know, y is equal to 2x minus 4. No big surprise there. That's just something you would have done back in like math 9. Um, but notice the question again was saying y is greater than or equal to this. Uh, well, your y values, of course, are your vertical component here. We're looking at all the y values that are greater than 2x minus 4. So imagine if we just focused in for a second on when x is equal to 2, for instance. If x was equal to 2, we'd have 2 times 2 minus 4, so we'd have 0, clearly. We'd have 0 as y. So y could just be any number that's greater than 0 when x is 2, right? So if x is 2, y has to be greater than 0. So it has to be some number above 0, right? The same goes if uh, x was equal to 3. You'd have 2 times 3 minus 4, which is 2. y has to be greater than or equal to 2. So it has to be, when x is 3, y has to be any number bigger than uh, bigger than two. So what we do is we actually just shade everything above, because this is greater than, so shade everything above the line. Now in previous years, I've had some students confused saying like, oh, like which, which one is above, which one's below. Um, and, and again, if you're, if you're one of those people, by all means, that, that's fine. Some people just have a hard time, you know, wrapping their head around what's, what's actually above a line in this case, because some people sometimes think it's over here. Uh, what I say is above is basically anything that if this was representing a roof, it would get rained on if rain was coming down, right? So that means everything up here is going to be shaded. Now, how I usually do it is I usually do it just perpendicular to the line itself. You can shade however you want, as long as it's clean, neat, and tidy. Uh, but just to save myself some time, I just shade like this. So perpendicular, so just like at a 90 degree angle away from my line. Um, this is actually way harder on a pen tablet than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but again, that just kind of keeps it nice and clean to an extent. Uh, and you don't have to go too, too crazy on this. You don't have to like literally color in the entire thing. That would take too long and it would drain all of your pens away. Um, but that's all you really have to do. Okay. So since y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 4, just shade everything above the line. Uh, we'll do another example here. If you feel confident that you can do this one on your own, by all means, give it a try. You can just even lightly do it in pencil. Uh, but aside from that, I'm going to go over this one. We have y is less than or equal to 2x, or sorry, negative 2x uh, plus 8. Just like before, this is a linear equation. We can just graph this like we graph any linear equation. Start with your y-intercept, which is your constant, so positive 8, and then look at your slope. It's negative 2. So that means when you go over 1, you have to go down 2, and then down 2, and keep on going. Just down 2 each time. No big deal. Keep on going, keep on going. There we go. You can even go in reverse over here uh, and then just, you know, connect the dots with a line because we could equal this. So we have to connect with a line. We could be anywhere along this line. When it says uh, y is less than or equal to, it's like the equation is built into this. So we got to connect it with a line. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Uh, but notice this time around, it says y is less than that or equal to, right? Less than or equal to. Uh, when it's less than, that means it's going to be 
below the line. Uh, and once again, the analogy uh, below the line would basically mean you're like under the roof. So if it was raining, if this was a roof and it was raining, where are you below the roof? Well, below the roof would be this side of the line, right? So we'd have to shade in this entire side right, ooh, that didn't go all the way, right here. So again, even if you just shade lightly like this, literally just a bunch of little lines just to get the idea down, uh, I'll be perfectly happy with that. If you honestly want to like spend the time to color in the whole thing, you know, by all means, go for it. But your pens are not going to thank you. So maybe don't do that. Uh, all right. So this begs the question. I'm sure most of you have probably had this thought at the back of your mind while, while looking at this. Uh, all the ones we've looked at for graphing on two dimensions have been uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Well, what if the inequality isn't an or equal to inequality like this one where it's strictly greater than? Uh, well, here's the good news. You, you can still graph this the same way. It's just unlike the previous ones where we had a solid line, you're going to have to do a dotted line instead because you have to indicate that your solutions are not actually going to lie on the line itself. Okay, so basically what I'm saying here is start by graphing this like you usually would. So start with your y intercept of negative six. Our slope this time around is technically one. So we go over one, up one over one, up one, and keep on going. Uh, and as tedious as this sounds, we're actually doing ourselves a favor by doing each of these little dots. You'll see why in just a second. Uh, all right, perfect. Now, usually we'd connect the dots of the line, uh, but because this is strictly greater than, we can't actually have our solutions on this line itself. And in math, we just represent that by a dotted or dashed line. Uh, so this dotted line is already pretty good, but just like for the sake of making it even better, I usually put a few extra dots in there just to really, really sail it home here that there is a dotted line present at that spot. And believe me, with this pen tablet thing that I'm using right now, I am not complaining that I'm doing a dotted line. This is actually quite nice. Uh, all right, so there's our dotted line, but still we have to deal with the fact that Y is greater than this line right here. So the dotted line just represents that we can't actually physically touch it but we still have our solutions that are greater than this line. So they're going to be above the line. I think with this example in particular, it's quite clear which side is above, but if you wanted to think about it as a roof, it's gonna be the side of the roof that gets hit by the rain. Either way you think about it though, we're shading above our line right here. Okay, one last question. Negative six X plus three Y is greater than nine. This one is a little bit weird because uh, well, y is not by itself in this case. Whenever you're graphing something, you want to make sure y is all by itself because that makes our lives way easier uh, for graphing equations. So what I would do is I'd start by adding 6x to both sides. So this is going to give me 3y is greater than, and I might as well put 6x right here. So 6x plus 9. Uh, but y is still not totally by itself. So let's divide everything by 3 here. y is now greater than 2x plus 3 this becomes much more clear what we're actually graphing, right? So start by graphing your old fashioned equation, quote unquote, right here. So two X plus three. Uh, so start with your Y intercept of positive three. We have a slope of positive two. So over two up or over one up two, over one up two and so on. Can't go any further there. So I'll go in reverse, left one down two, left one down two and so on. There we go. Uh, and notice this is strictly greater than, that means we're not going to actually physically draw the line because we can't actually touch the line with our solution. So let's just put a couple dots in here. Once again, just to really drive this home that we are dealing with uh, a strictly greater than type equation. There we go. That's, that's good enough. Uh, all right, now again, we're dealing with uh, greater than, so we have to shade above the line. Again, if you think about it as if it's raining, the, the side that's on the, the above the roof is going to be the one that we actually shade here. So we're shading all of this right here. There it is. That's all there is to it. That was a really quick lesson. Holy smokes, we're not even like 15 minutes in and we're done. So for practice today, I want you guys trying these questions right here, page 472, questions 1A, 2C, 3ACEF, and 4ACE. It's a really... Uh, you know, hand pick sample selection of questions there, but they are very important, so make sure you're getting them done. Um, but if you want something that has a bit of a different flair, our chapter nine homework assignment is already posted. It is in week four, 
Uh, it, it does not have its own assignment post. It's in week four. You just have to scroll down to the bottom. Uh, this, this assignment is actually going to be due on Wednesday, January 13th, which is after we return to classes. So here's the deal. First of all, you right now can complete questions one to four, at least theoretically. You should be able to do those ones right now. Uh, this assignment is going to be submitted in person. It is not going to be submitted on Google Classroom. Um, and that's because classes resume on January 11th. So, you know, we might as well hand it in in person. Uh, now, just so you know, I'll hand out physical copies of it on the 11th. But if you choose not to do any of this assignment before then, that means you kind of have crunch time both the night of the 11th and the night of the 12th uh, to get this assignment done, plus whatever time I give you in class those days. Uh, so in the meanwhile, it probably would be a good idea to do your work on a piece of loose leaf paper. And then on the 11th, when I give you a physical coffee, copy, not coffee, copy, uh, then you can uh, transfer your work onto the physical copy right after you receive it. Uh, now, if you're one of those few people in the class who actually has a printer at home, you've got a bit of an edge. You can actually laugh right now. Just print it off on your own and you can hand that in. No big deal, right? But if you don't have a printer, don't sweat it. It's not due to the 13th. Um, and in case you're thinking, oh, that puts us at an unfair advantage. No, it doesn't. The 13th is actually quite a, a fair deadline because you will be able to uh, complete the entire thing after just Friday's lesson. So today, tomorrow, Friday. That's it. You'll be able to complete it after that. It's a very short, uh, short unit and not a very long homework assignment. So you'll be just fine. That's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, as always, if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Uh, best of luck.